Welcome to the gag reflex. So what are we? What are we talking? We're talking about after that mad lib. We're talking about uh, weird things people have done in public or at school or wherever. Weird things that people have. Weird, weird things that people have done in public or said. Yeah. Man, you know, there's a bunch of weird things that set me off about people, but I think the biggest thing is whenever people constantly have to try and one-up each other, you know what I'm talking about? Right, like when you invite someone onto your podcast <laughs> no, to be no. the guest? No, <laughs> I'm not even talking about that, but... What are, what are you talking about? Well, just like, it, it's kind of like in anything, like, you know, there's people that whenever they get better grades on tests and, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna show you even though you got a really good one or... You know, about even like with athletics or you want to talk about anything, there's always something that people use to clarify themselves, and it just bothers me. And I just thought I had to get that out. Yeah, well, you know, there's also the exact opposite of that, like when people never can be happy or proud. So, for example, you know, let's say in an English class where someone gets <laughs> a, a grade that is less than they <laughs> less than they would like, and they decide to raise a ruckus about it. Okay, so I guess we can't go back to it because the first one has been deleted. We should probably talk about that a little bit. The first, clarify, yeah, we might as well just It was, it was really raunchy. The first, yeah, the first one, like, in hindsight, going back and listening to it afterwards, it was not only very racist, but also included, like, personal attacks on people <laughs> that after a week of floating around, we sort of realized, like, oh, that, that maybe shouldn't be out there. And even, we tried to be politically correct <laughs> about it, and I think, I think they've gotten easier to make as a result of it. Yeah, because we know what topics to avoid. So, like, for example, like, personal, you know, yeah. personal narratives are risky. You just have to you know, leave out yeah. all of the names. Yeah. Like, you gotta say this kid instead of whatever. Or just say their social security numbers. Right. You know, here's the phone number, email address, Twitter account, Instagram account, Snapchat, social security number. Go follow. Credit card. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're on our way to taking over North America as well. Yeah. Uh, that part's gonna be cut out, though, so I don't know if people want to stay the team right. of North America? What do you mean? Like when everyone oh, said that's the right. podcast was going to be all over North America by now. Yeah, I guess that's true. We really, we kind of set our goals for ourselves in that first episode. It's a shame that it's down, but I guess we're, you know, better for it. Maybe someday we'll go back and edit out like 90% of the content in that episode. <laughs> so that people can go back and listen to like five minutes of it and understand like a lot of the references we're making. I mean, most of the ones that we have, we have made have been like 30 plus minutes. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, We've got a fair amount of content out there already. I know. We should just splice it up and then say, you know, here, here's a video. We should call it the audio book. And, like, <laughs> you know, sell it on tape. And, like, put Nicholas Sparks' name on it until it gets big enough to where he... Right. Can... Or John Green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Gag I'm... Reflex, the newest novel by John Green. <laughs> you know, like, the description needs to be something like, two teenagers in a suburban wasteland discover their true meaning of life, and then people tune in and... It's that xylophone and welcome to the gag reflex. Uh, How fast do you think that you would like to sue him? John Green? Yeah. How quickly do you think that I don't know. I feel like if he tried to sue me, I'd just like tell him that his crash course was painful to watch and he wasn't funny at all. And then he'd start crying and he wouldn't be down to like face me in court, you know? I don't think so. I it's don't sort think of like, his honor. It's sort of like when someone assaults someone and then they don't want to see them in court again, you know, like they can't look at them. That's what it would be like, because I just, like, straight up bash this dude. I think John Green sucks, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Really? Why is that? I think he, he just, he sucks, man. It's just because he's smarter than you. You just, just want to one-up. Okay, well, first of all... That's all it is. You just have to one-up. You know, hours spent watching that dumb World History Crash Course video for extra credit. I don't think he's funny. I, I think his voice is annoying. I think his books are super generic and just stupid. And, yeah... We should go find his address and tell people that I get help. Yeah. This is where famed children's author John Green lives. <laughs> if you would, please vandalize his property. Throw a stinky egg. <laughs> or light a flaming bag of... Light, light a bag of poop on fire and put it on his doorstep. Egg on his People apologize, but... We're not going to really apologize for everything. Yeah. Because, as you saw you guys in are, the description, we know everything, so... Yeah. You guys are our listeners, and we owe you nothing. We don't care if you, well, I mean, it'll, <laughs> it'll kind of, like, affect me, like, you know, like, my sense of self-worth if I notice that no one's listening anymore, but, like, like I feel kind of bad, because now I've just insulted whoever's out there. There's going to be, okay, so you know how it says, like, you know, how many, how many 
listens within listens. the past twenty four right. hours, week, and everything. There's yeah. gonna be there's gonna be one, and there's gonna be one comment that says, "You guys suck." <laughs> <laughs> I told everyone else not to tune in. Um, also, um, just for reference, sort of for this uh, particular episode, in a little while, we're going to be joined by uh, our first caller. We've decided to, after our first guest incident, where you know. Uh, it was kind of confusing to have three people talking at once all the time. It made it difficult to hear. So what we've decided to do is kind of go with a caller-type format where these people are only guests for a specific part. So for today we actually are going to have a caller who will ring in later in the episode. But normally I think what we're going to do is we're going to record with these people separately, take clips from it, and then edit it in later on right. so as to avoid you know confusion. Well, he's definitely going to be either in this one or the next one. Yes, yeah. we don't know... If, uh, Everything's going to work today, out. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We're not going to censor this show anymore, really. I think would be the better way to do this. Unless we say, like, the C word. I mean, <laughs> that's like, where we draw the line. Because <laughs> like, that's the word that like people are going to hear and be like, oh my god, that's distasteful. Because, like... <laughs> Well, like, what? okay. If I'm watching... There's only one word okay. in the English dictionary yeah. that we can't use. We well, can't like, say, like, think Alaskan about pipeline and things like that. Yeah, no, it. that's fine. Alaskan pipeline? Yeah. What yeah. is that? Uh, just... Is that like a sex term? Uh, kind of. I mean... Explain it. It's where... <laughs> I mean, this is a very large tangent. Go ahead, go ahead. But it's where you take a... And then you can use that however you want. Because that is the Alaska pipeline. Ugh. Well, so like um, specific call-outs will probably not happen. Well, I can go ahead and do one, but not, go ahead. Name, not name names. Go ahead. So... There is this child. I'm not joking. He is a child in my one of my classes. I'm not oh, gonna say which very one. broad, very see, broad. See, Casting a broad net. Very good. We're changing, and so I'm not far even... we're not going to have to remove any of this. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. So the way this child sits, and I'm not joking that he is a child because this man child is five one. Okay. He is in the freshman class, which is very large. Oh, and side sidebar, real quick. Yeah. We were watching a documentary today in forensic science. Did you know that Charles Manson was only 5'1"? Are you serious? Yeah. You'd expect him to be... In, in, not important. Continue. continue. Yeah, little Manson. Yeah. Little um, Manson drum. Little Manson drum. Little Manson. <laughs> oh, sh- okay, no, whatever. Just no. finish your story. <laughs> okay. So, this kid, I'm not even joking. It's like every part of his ACL is just missing. He sits to where his thigh and the back of his ankle touch. Into his chair. I'm not even joking. This man, I don't know if he's flight school or whatever, but he is that that tiny uh-huh. and his legs are that small that he's able to do that. And he makes these jokes that make the entire class turn around and just kind of look at him. And, you know, it's kind of like just one of those people that is an attention seeker, but not a very good one. Because kind of, kind of like me. He just, like, curls up in a ball and sits in his chair and then, like, makes these jokes. And eventually... We like the entire senior population in that classroom has just, just like diverted their gazes upon him uh, and have almost like quelled his need to attention seek. You know what I mean? Just by like the, the gazes. death glare, like L O O. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. That's just one of my one, one of my things. It's like I can't I can't stand it whenever people are like seeking attention, like uh, whatever people. You know, I saw I um. I go onto Snapchat, and I look at stories, and there are, I think, three different people had uploaded this video of me reading your dumb poem that you wrote that was thrust upon me to read with the caption something about, this poem is about necrophilia, or this poem is about having sex with dead people. That's what I, that's, that's what I handed it to you. <laughs> that's why you weren't going to read it? No, you, you weren't there, and we decided, Jack... <laughs> in order to attain my credit for that project, you had to read it. And the poem's name, I'll have you know, was A Taste of Death. Okay. Or A Taste for Death. I'm not, it's not very well known yet. Not yet. <laughs> wait wait two or so centuries. This thing's going to like fade into obscurity. And then in like 2,250, it's going to make this massive comeback. And people are going to be reading it in school, you know? This is like where the part where you get really angry at your psychologist, and yeah. psychiatrist, and you just get really 
angry, and then you just... Dr. Miles told me that suppressing these feelings would help! <laughs> yeah, you want to suppress everything. Yeah. So if you let the feelings bubble up to the surface, well then... You, Everyone else is going to know you're weak. that you're you just know? a dipweed. A dipweed. Yeah. That's, no one wants to be a dipweed. <laughs> we, should, we should call the people that listen to the show something. The gaggers. The reflexers. <laughs> we could be the gaggers, they could be the reflexers. Yeah. Welcome back to the gag reflex. We're the gaggers, y'all are the flexers. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty great. Or we could call them like the chokers or something. Chokeholds. Or the forcing to the gag reflex. You guys are the chokeholds, our constituent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you hate it whenever the farmer has no milk and you can't provide for your family? Right, and they so, have to go hungry for another week. Right, and then... And the cow has run dry, <laughs> and the water is rising, but the cotton won't grow. And then you find an eggshell in the back of your farm, and it grows to be a dragon. And I was going to say, like, you know little Johnny's been sneaking eggs out there and eating them. So you approach him about it, and you say, <laughs> little Johnny, I know you've been eating these eggs. I found the shells, and he says, no, Pa, it weren't me. So you beat him with a pair of jumper tables. And scissors. And scissors, Yeah. <laughs> But just with the buttons, because we're safe. Yeah. Right. Your safety scissors. You yeah. can just slap him with the side <laughs> of it. Well, the other day, I was trying to do something. I think, you know that trick where you take the scissors and you flip them inside out so they don't right. work? Well, I was trying to do that, and I was pressing on it, and I straight up just cut the tar out of my finger. I didn't realize that scissors were that sharp. Did you have to get your parents come and tap you on the shoulder, and they handed you a pair of plastic scissors? Yeah, no, but like I had to go to the hospital and get my finger put back on. Oh, really? Yeah, it sucked. That looks pretty good right now, though. Yeah, the doctor did a really good job. Speaking of which, I have a really great story. No. Whenever I was about four years old, we lived in the house that my mom and dad constructed. Yeah. And Where? It was in Owasso. Where's that? And it's in Oklahoma. Okay. And it was kind of out by the boonies, but, I mean, Garth Brooks is our neighbor, so okay. it was, like, before he was really big, and he was, like, kind of, like, a mid-level a star right there. Okay. And so we're like opening Christmas presents, I think is what it was, and stuff like there was a, just a pair of scissors flying out as you know, cut the presents open and things like that. Yeah. And I took the scissors and I don't know why, but I guess I just had a brief lapse in moral reasoning because the next thing I remember is I was chasing around trying to cut my cat's tail off Ooh. with with the scissors. Did you succeed? No, I did not succeed, oh. and yeah. I was placed, I'm not even joking, I was placed on a three-year ban from scissors. By who? By my parents. They would not <laughs> let me use a pair of scissors. <laughs> for three years. For three years, until I was like seven or eight years old. They set like a date, and I can still remember <laughs> it whenever they let me use scissors. After what was the moment. date? I think it was like whenever I, it was like my seventh birthday or something Oh like my that. god. Only they get you like a really nice pair for your birthday. Give me a nice Son, <laughs> today you're a man. They wrote on it for the cat. Yeah. Well, like they do, like you know, the knighting ceremony. They tap you on each shoulder with the scissors and ask you to rise. Right, and yeah. then, but I pants them so the queen banished me from the kingdom, and then I had no food. But then I made a rival kingdom about a mile off, and we came up and they called us the cultists, but we were a lot bigger than just a cult. It was well, just like a following at that point. You know, it happens to the best of us. I do have an interesting story. Um, in my art class, uh, you know, for the past couple of days, I've just had, like, a really bad work ethic, especially in that class. And, um, well, I had, we have these metal rulers, and I was using it because, like, I needed it for the art project, and this kid across from me was eating an apple. I told him, hey, throw the apple in the air, and I'll slice it in half. Oh, right, so, you're skilled in that. Right? Yeah, well, so this kid, like, no, man, I want to eat this apple. So he eats it up until he's got, like, the core and a fair amount of, like, apple meat on it still, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, are you going to throw it down? He tosses it up in the air, and I swing this ruler, and I chop it clean in half. <laughs> it was the coolest thing I've ever done. And these chunks of fruit spray everywhere, and there's apple juice all over the table. And these two, like, halves go flying in different directions. So I was like the real-life fruit ninja. So I was, like, stunned for a second. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, that really just worked. But the teacher got kind of pissed. She didn't want us cutting up fruit in her class. So you cut up an apple, but really you got egg all over your face. I didn't get... <laughs> no, I got apple all over my face, and I didn't... Like, there wasn't any sort of mistake. I cut it up while it was flying through the air. 
<laughs> Did she explain about how cool that was to her? Yeah, well, she didn't seem to understand. She in the office. Excuse but... me, do you not realize what I just did? I just cut an apple out of the air. Can you please stop talking to me like I'm some sort of child? Did the uh, JRTC force come and recruit you for your sword? Yeah. Set? <laughs> You're going to be very helpful to the Navy SEALs one day. Yeah, so we found out today that the JRTC at our school, which is a, I don't even know what to call it. What is it? like? It's like a pseudo-military organization that trains people to get ready for like the army and everything. Okay. They have an armory in which they have guns? And swords. <laughs> and swords. <laughs> and they practice with them. Yeah. I don't really know when you would ever need that out well, of school. Like, but... how much cooler would wars be if, like, no one had to worry about, like, the Geneva Convention stuff? Because we didn't use, like, conventional, like, guns and stuff anymore. It was all swords. You know? Like, everyone was trained like samurai, and you just had, like, these thousands of people running into each other, hacking each other apart with swords. <laughs> That's already That's happened. a war I'd want to be in. That's already happened. Yeah, like, in the past, but I mean, like, now. I don't know. I like, think nobody really holds a candle to, uh, what's it? it? starts with an S. Spain. Spang? Maybe. <laughs> Whose name is Spang? <laughs> I don't know, but he's like an incredible actor. I just block, or sorry, director. I just am blocking out his name right now. S- Steven Spielberg? Spielberg. Spang! Spangler. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking Spangler. It was that's the Spielberg. Ghostbuster. Yeah. Egon that's what, Spangler. That's, I think that's what I was blocking on. I don't know. I think probably the best movie maker. Oh, dude's ready. Hold on. We'll call him in just a I think the best movie makers out there are um, the Coen Brothers. They did The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You ever seen that? No. It's great movies. They did that. Their newest one was Hail Caesar, and apparently it was bad, but I don't know. All right. I'm calling the dude. Our our second guest on the gag reflex. Can you see his face? Hello. Hello. Uh, here, can you can you see us? Oh, there he oh, is. Uh, well, it's all green and, and pink and weird. You need you need a new camera, bro. It's a cell phone. It is cell phone. <laughs> oh, okay, that works too. It's like green and pink. It's all sorts of fun. Oh, oh well, there you kind of go. I can see you. Well, what up? We've got the shit. Shit. Yeah. So we're recording. You're our first caller on the gag reflex. Um, second sweet. guest. First Second caller. guest, first caller. Because, you know, the last guest we had, things sort of went off the rails in a direction we didn't want them to. Off the rails? How? Well, like... He took over. Yeah, it was very commanding. You so, brought an alpha male. That was your problem. Yeah. You, you know, we're both betas, but, you know, what am I... Like, <laughs> okay, so a little bit of introduction. Beta, Introduce yourself, Dan. All right, uh, my name is Dan. Uh, I was on exchange with Jack. Uh, I come from New York, a shitty town in New York. And that's really all about, about me. That's about it. That's all I got. Okay, <laughs> now, your town is the meth capital of New York, am I right? Oh, yes, we are the meth capital of New York, for sure. We uh, actually just recently had a couple of bus going down. We had, a uh, year before my exchange, we had, we caught not only one, but we had three meth on wheels. This is like the meals on wheels, but for methamphetamine. Yeah, it was great. They were running out of the back of like a Yukon, um, oh. which was pretty neat. Um, and then my friends actually got bullied into buying pseudofed oh, for, Christ. A, for a meth maker. So it, it's pretty prevalent. Is it's that what you guys thing. are known for? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, my town's name is Oneida. Feel free to look it up. Uh, it was on, my mom was watching a Lifetime movie the other day, and, uh, the girl goes, oh, I'm from a small town in central New York called Oneida. It used to be nice, but now everyone's unemployed. <laughs> so, that's my town. Nice. Um. Yeah. Jack in the Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Oh, man. That Thank was you. pretty impressive. Okay. I think you solidified your st- spot on the not so prestigious gag reflex. The gag reflex right. uh, <laughs> guest positive experience guest list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you've not been well, blacklisted so far. The negative experience, right? Yeah. Well, no. Well, it was it was it was, it was a learning experience. I'd say. He's on the he's on the third list. The learning. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. He's not the quite down at the bottom yet. So. <laughs> 
you know, as the guest, we feel, you know, we need a little bit of entertainment. I think you should tell the story about the prostitutes. Yeah, we got a lot of dirty horror stories. Yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> the brothel was pretty neat, if you want to go off that one. Go ahead. Because, I, well, it was really nice because it was, like, in a part of town where it was, like, a small street. And there was, like, construction, like, scaffolding going on. But, it, like, they weren't doing anything with it. It was just there, you know, like they were doing something. Um, this was in Vienna, by the it, way. This place, this place wasn't really much. It was pretty much just a doorway into an open club where you saw a lot of large, busty women sitting there, <laughs> but, like, clearly fake busty women. Um, so you're just walking by, and it was just an open door, and you just see this, like, kind of gross, slimy kind of lounge thing. And there wasn't even a sign on the door. No sign. There was, there was like, a little plaque, and it wasn't, it wasn't even in German because we were in uh, Austria at the time. Vienna. So I don't even know what it said. Uh, and then we go in there because... Jack thought it was uh, a brothel, and good good point because it most definitely was a brothel. We, <laughs> there. we we asked the ladies kind of gently, like I, I didn't know one wanted to come out and say, "Hey, do you blow dudes?" Because <laughs> what sort of entrance or entrance is that, you know? Um, so we kind of asked, like, "Hey, you know, what's going on? Uh, you know, what do you guys do?" And the lady gave a response, like, "Why don't you buy a drink and we'll find out?" Uh, and it's like. The drink menu was like ten dollars for a shit beer. So and, it was like, and it was like not, there, were, there were a bunch of old men sitting around with these huge glasses oh, of yeah. wine, like the size of like a bowl like, you'd see on a table, and they were sitting around sipping these wines with these women with them. Are these people gonna like kill you if you didn't buy your their maybe? Drinks? No, they were very they were very polite, but it, it, it seemed that when we walked in there, we were very out of place, uh, probably because you know we were you know young and everyone else, and there was. 45 plus so that was probably a little weird for them threw them off uh, and everyone kind of turned and listened into our conversation uh and then from there it, it kind of turned into like a game of like no what do you really do here and they're like oh buy a drink and you'll really find out type deal so i went back and forth like three times and then I, we got kind of got sick of the of the old men staring at us so we went across the street and of course went to the strip club that was there uh, because nice, they don't absolutely. ask questions yeah that was pretty neat. Yeah. And these things are too convenient. Place, aren't they? Yeah. Well, this was sort of a sort of a, you know, usually it's CD the place. Way. Usually it's the opposite way. Usually you enter the strip club and then you go to the brothel. Yeah. Rather than, you know, the show before dinner. Talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't interested in purchasing any young ladies. <laughs> Not on that occasion. But, but these these brothels are. Dude, they're common or shit. I've seen them. There's one in um, Bremen. You get out, or Oldenburg. It was like straight across the street out of the train station. You walk down this sketchy alleyway, and I had a black lady sitting there, and she like unzipped the top of her. Uh, I don't know. What Wait, did you did you hire house. this woman? No, I didn't oh. hire this woman. Uh, <laughs> Luis and I were walking down the road, and this lady was standing on the outside. And I, she looked like a hooker, so I said, turned to Luis, I was like, you know, how much would you give me if I ask her how much for a blowjob? And he's like, I don't know, like 10 euros. So as we're walking, turns out, she just looked at me, unzips, like, down to here, and shows me her titties, and then, like, <laughs> zips it, and puts them together and zips it back up, and I was like, and then I saw she was standing outside of a strip club, or, or a, I don't know, brothel, I guess, a prostitute or free. So it turns out she would have blown me if I had asked, which I didn't. Well, maybe just a asked. stud. Maybe that was just you know, <laughs> conveniently placed. She was just walking past and saw I, you. And or was... she just thought I was cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I, what I'm saying. Like maybe she's just you know female equivalent. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe she just thought you were cute. It's a female equivalent to a dick pic, I guess. That's <laughs> Getting flashed on the street. <laughs> That's a funny topic, dick pics. Like, what? <laughs> Why would someone do that? <laughs> Anywho, those are some of my adventures. Mm. I feel like that's, like, what you guys experienced, from what I've heard, was just filled with, just, like... Brothels? Yeah. No, not as much... Well, my interesting brothel experience was, um... They all had, like, red hearts in the windows, so you knew what they were. It's like, you know, a little kid wouldn't walk in there thinking it was a store. And... and then, uh, my first husband was in this little, like, village, and I had to ride the bus there, and there was this truck stop on the way. 
That's just a little area to pull over, like a little rest area. And there was this RV that was always parked there that had one of the red hearts in the window. And you'd see these truckers would pull over and they'd get in this little like this little RV. So it was like a mobile brothel. Like, welcome to the 21st century, you know? Mobile love. Yeah. Anywhere, anytime, anyhow. We should start that, Jack. Uh, <laughs> what, what would be a good name for that business? The gag reflex. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's got to be something really clever and witty, but I'm just not witty enough to come up with it on the spot here. I'd have to think about it for a while. Roadhead. <laughs> 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 travel release Sexual road, road no. sex with Jack Billy yeah bye bye or, Jack Billy yeah. Yeah. Uh, something something just completely obvious like <laughs> fucking RV <laughs> or a fuck wagon the, yeah the sex the sex mobile yeah there we go <laughs> the cops I'm, are like uh, uh, should we be concerned and he's like no no sir this is not a mobile prostitution organization <laughs> If that's what you're wondering, fuck you. <laughs> oh, yes. What else did you guys do down there, other than go to the brothels? What was oh um? What was another interesting experience? Meeting Caillou in general. Oh Christ! That, was, that kid. That, has he told you about the monster dong? Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I need to. No. There was this kid. There was this. There was, there was this kid named Caillou. He was from Brazil. And this kid was a great... Oh, he can't, he can't hear this. He can't hear this. So oh, no. Um, I, I don't have him on any social media, so it's all good. I do. It's weird. Uh, well, I um, no, I have him on Facebook, but I don't post these to Facebook. Good. So, this kid, he was from Brazil, and his name was Caillou. And, like, uh, from the very beginning, he was, he was you know, uh, everyone thought he was pretty chill. And then everyone got to know him and realized, like, he wasn't at all. And, um... Like, the, the only word that can be used to describe this kid is, like, you look at him, and you're just like, twat. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, and, but, like, we were on this, like, Germany tour, and it must have been the first or second night. Yeah, oh, it was, like, the first night. Yeah, and we were we were hanging out in this room, and, like, nothing was happening, and, um, I said something about how you can, or, no, you said, you he, Dan said something, like, also, um, do any of you guys have condoms just in case I need one? And then Caillou's like, oh, yeah, I have them, but they're really expensive because they're extra large. <laughs> and so... <laughs> no, he, he goes, yeah, because they're extra large magnum. Like, <laughs> they make, like, they make an XL magnum. Like, I don't know, it's so, kind of implied in the name. The, Anyways, this, yeah. This kid and, was and just and so proud of his one, huge no, no, condoms. What had, happened, what had happened was, I was like, oh, anyone... If anyone needs condoms, I have them or something like that. And Kai was like, "Yeah, okay, give me one just in case." And I gave him one, and he looks at me kind of puzzled, and he goes, "Oh, you know, I can't take this. I need, I need an extra large magnum." <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, "All right, dude." Uh, so then, so then we started busting on him for like ten minutes about him and his monster dog. Yeah. And then here's the kicker. So I guess the American girls are probably the slow. We're the sluttiest girls on exchange by far. They they cut loose. Um, they cut loose. They they were loose. They were it. like Stargate. I don't know. Stargate. Uh, and, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> this American girl had, did end up having sex with Caillou. Um, right off the bat. She gets on the bus. She gets on the bus, and we had just told her the story, and she kind of looks at me, and she goes. That's weird, because he had a small dick. <laughs> so I was like, ah! so then the jokes just started raining. The jokes oh. started raining, because he he asked for it. He was asking for it. You he know? set himself up. You can't. Yeah, you can't go out there saying, yeah, I have an XL magnum-sized dong, and then, you know. <laughs> not, not have, have the, meat, the, the manpower to back it up. Maybe he was just stupid. He was everything oh, he was. He was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty dumb. Oh, that, that last picture that you sent me? When he said he's, he's spiraling or he's out of control or something. Oh my god, I almost lost this it. This kid, he, he, okay, so he uploads this picture to Facebook of him and he's, he's dyed his hair like this, like, bleached looking blonde. And, like, people are just, like, ripping on him. Huh? It, it, it's, like, not even dyed, though. It's, like, only the top portion of yeah. his hair. It's, like, oh he dipped his head and, in the In the Facebook comments, everyone who, like, we knew from this thing it was like just roasting him. Like one 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 girl said, like one girl said, like did you lose a bet or something? 
and he would reply to these com- Yeah. And then he would like reply like like he didn't realize he was being insulted. <laughs> and he'd, he'd say like, "Yeah, I look like Justin Bieber now." He said that at one point. And then well, I guess I guess he finally like recognized that people weren't just like, you know, giving him a hard time like he actually looked awful. Right. So he um shaved it off and then there was this picture that went up on Facebook. I think it's this profile picture. It's this picture of him and then he's like got this full beard. And he's just wide-eyed. His eyes are like twice as big as a normal human being should be. And uh, he's, his head is just completely shaved. And he's holding up like a solo cup. It's the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. So he turned it's into an actual disaster. Caillou. Yeah. Like Caillou from the TV show, yeah. <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it's an absolute disaster. It was a disaster. He's spiraling out of control. I mean, it was a disaster when his parents named him Caillou. Yeah. That's step one. Well, maybe it doesn't have like the same implications in Brazil. Maybe. No, it doesn't. I it, it definitely doesn't because when we when all the Americans started, we just started you know singing the song, calling them you know saying. Caillou. That's probably why the rest of the world hates us. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely it. But yeah, that kid the kid was very friendly in the beginning, and then I just like the more and more I was around him, I was like, man, you're a dickhole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about Wyatt? How, not oh, Wyatt, Morgan, Wyatt. Mountain, Montana Mike. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, yeah. there was this kid. Montana Mike. There was this kid who was on our Europe trip. He wasn't from our district, so no one knew him. He was supposed to go with his like group, but they wouldn't let him go because he failed his German test. But then our group, you know, our area was like, you know what? No, you can come We're with us. Like, We're yeah. friendly. Yeah. So they took him in, and he was this super tall, super skinny dude named Morgan Wyatt. And like right off the bat, we started calling him. Uh, Montana Mike. <laughs> like, <laughs> so this guy was from Alaska, and he grew up on like a fishing boat. You know, he'd never yeah, been to it school. Was fucking, it was a, it was an oyster. Oh, that's fishing. right. He, he fished for oysters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he um he so we started calling him Montana Mike because there's a steakhouse where my grandma lives in South Texas called Montana Mike's. Oh, so you started. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not proud of that, but it, so that was. <laughs> So it, then it, but then from there it just sort of shifted to really anything that started with two M's. So he was like, he was like Mountain Man, Mountain Mike, Montana I was, Mountains. I called him Mad Man Mike for a while. Yeah. Or this, Mad Man. Because yeah. this man was Mad Man. He was a lunatic. What do you mean? He had no sense of personal hygiene. <laughs> no. Take like someone uh, that has never, okay, take a boy and raise him by his family for 17 years with no social interaction with any other human being, and that's the kid you get. Uh, this kid was the most unsocialized person. Like, it was to the point where he had no clue of social cues whatsoever. There was no, there was nothing. You could be like, you know, you could get annoyed and, like, just kind of look annoyed, and a normal person's like, oh, he's annoyed, I'm going to leave him alone. You could, like, pretty much say this kid, you're annoying me, please stop, <laughs> and he would just go and do something weird. Like, he took my, I had a, a thing of Haribo's, that was like, it was a container, like, like gummy a, bears. A, right. a cylinder, it was about yay big, like this, it was probably about six pounds worth of Haribo gummies. He takes it, and it's it's more than half full, it's like three-fourths of the way full, out of nowhere. So he's like, hey, can I, can I have one? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. We're sitting in the back of the bus. He takes this container and he just does this. He opens up the top, and I can't even explain it. He just goes, ah! <laughs> like or whatever he did. He like made it sound like ah, and like breathed all over the gummies. I was like, they're yours now. Those hard bones are now yours. Well, the, the, the best rivalry with him though was there was this Canadian kid named Tim who just hated him more than anyone else because oh, everyone else could put up with him, but Tim. The best one, though, there, he was sitting in the back, and Tim had these, like, Beats headphones. And he's sitting back there, and he's listening to these Beats, and Morgan's, like, pestering him. And he says something like, um, yeah, those are really expensive. And Tim looks at him, and he goes, yeah, I mean, he has a super strong Canadian accent. I can't even imitate it. I could barely understand a word the guy said. But he, he looks at him, and he goes, yeah, some people are richer than others. Oh <laughs> he, puts his, he puts his headphones back on. And he I goes back. Oh <laughs> it was, oh, it was beautiful. Tim could not tolerate the kid. He got Tim got like blackout, not blackout drunk, but pretty close to blackout drunk, uh, and almost fought the kid. Oh yeah, uh, on multiple Tim, occasions. Tim would have murdered him. Oh, um, that was bad. What other th- Tim was Tim was like to the point where it was 
past the bullying threshold. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the point where it was, like, like it legitimately <laughs> worried me when the two were in, like, the room together. Right. Oh, yeah, it was... If the tensions were high, it was either we got to get Tim out of here or we got to get Morgan out of here yeah. because something's going to go wrong. Oh, it was bad. And it always did. So, like, was oh, Montana God. just, like, was he really that bad? Oh, he was, he, was, he was unbearable, but, like, the degree that Tim took it to is just not understandable, you know? Right. Oh, man. I mean, if he doesn't know any better, then I really don't know, like, I don't know this kid, so I don't know how to feel yeah. for him, but... No, you don't. You've never. I can almost one hundred percent guarantee you have never met a kid like this in your life. Oh yeah, it was. It was like, I'm trying to think like who I could name drop without actually name dropping. He um he was just like every word that came out of his mouth made me want to put a nail in my forehead. <laughs> like like um, it, it was it was bad. It was, it was just like he. I would be doing something and I would hear what he was saying and whatever he had to say. It was almost always. Like, my response is always, like, what? Why would you say that? Like, I don't get it. I don't understand. And so, to get around this, because we knew his German was shit, whenever he came around us, we would all just start speaking German together. Yeah, and he wouldn't because understand a word. So, so he'd come in and, you know, we'd be, like, having a conversation or whatever, he'd go, he'd come up and he'd go, yeah! <laughs> you know, and, like... <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, oh God. God. And then, then there was Victoria. Those two should Ooh. be together. Victoria Walsh, she was this girl from Minnesota. She, oh, God, how much, how much, what, you got to say 400? No, I wouldn't say 400. 350? I'd say, I'd say solid three. We she talking weight? Three. Oh, yeah. She was a big one. Ooh. And, um. Is this, is this Timmy's girl? Who's Timmy? Oh, Tim, no, 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 <laughs> no. um, but she had, you know, also had personal hygiene issues. Um, and, she, oh, God. I, I think the thing that really just sort of put her off on the wrong foot with everyone was right off the bat on this Germany trip. We stopped in Cologne, and she buys this hat. The stupidest <laughs> thing, and she wore it constantly. It was this hat. It was like this military hat, except black. And it had, like, a German flag on it. It said, Germany on it. And, like, Germany, see what, it was... Germany. So we're walking around, and everyone's, you know, trying to blend in or whatever, because like, we're so cultural. And there she is with her Germany hat, waltzing around. She never learned German, either. Really? Yeah. No. She, well, what happened was she thought she was going to Australia, which is, I don't know why she would ever think that, because, like, I'm pretty sure the United States is not exchanged with Australia, because it's an English-speaking country. It's like going to fucking Canada. Like, why the fuck would you exchange with Canada? But, uh, so, she was under the impression that she wasn't going to have to learn a language, so when... So when she found out that she was going to Germany, it just threw her off totally. And she was like, nope, not going to learn the language, because I don't want to learn a language. And she, sort of, like, she sort of got there and just shut down. Oh, she shut down big time. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, with, the, with this ball cap, when we say that she wore this all the time, I mean to the degree that she probably slept in this. Oh, yeah, it was, it was obscene. Anytime you saw her, she had sex. But, like... It, it, her hair was, like by the end of the trip, was so greasy and oiled, you can see, like, there was, like, individual clumps of strands. It was, like, dreadlocks, oh, almost. It was, it was, ugh. But it, it was just, like, plopped down by this army-style fucking hat. It was an army-style hat, too, so it was yeah. weird as shit for to be wearing it in the first place. And, um, it was not good. Not good. There's a bunch of freaks on this Oh, shit. yeah, there were a bunch. There were, I mean, there were cool people, too, but there were, oh, this girl. Especially this girl. She, um, oh, one of the best moments was like right off the bat, you know, never even spoken to her before. And um, I came down for breakfast, and there were a bunch of other people there, and uh, apparently she'd been walking around uh, with a white t-shirt and no bra. And I was not aware of this fact. I saw it. Yeah, oh, yeah, he saw it, but I was not aware of this fact. And um, apparently she had just, for lack of a better phrase, pepperoni nips. So, so these girls all start like, they're all, because they were like in a room with her and everything, and they start making jokes, and one of them goes and they say, hey, Jack. You like pepperoni? I'm like confused because I, I I wasn't you know in on this and I'm like what are you even talking about? And then she comes down the stairs and this girl you know sort of gestures with her head towards her and you look over and sure enough oh instantly it clicks. It was uh. It was bad. Yeah, she was just an unbearable human being really. Sounds like she has problems. Probably. 
She definitely could have had problems. And my my concern is all the way through the, when I when I signed up for Rotary, you know, I don't know if it was the same way with you, Jack, but I had, you know, an initial paper like paperwork to fill, like mental health paperwork to fill. And then I went to a pre interview for my district or not my district, my club, and then there's clubs in a district. Um, and then I went to my district interview, which was pretty rigorous. It was like probably a two hour thing where I you know, a couple of the rooms were really nice, you know, just asking me about my mental health, my family. And then some of them were like grilled me like on answers, like political questions and all this stuff. Um, I don't know if they just didn't check on this girl because like I would have instantly seen her be like, nah, you're not going on exchange. Like, what do you think? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I don't know. They just let her go. They just slipped through the cracks. I don't fucking know. It was, yeah, she was. Did you have to get through an interview process? Oh, I had to go through a bunch of interviews. It was the same deal as that, where, you know, it was in different situations with different people, you know. Like, they had former exchange students, they had the people in charge of the program and everything. And, you know, they pretty much, they'll let just about anyone go. But, you, you know, you have to realize through this process that, like, that's what you want to do and that you're right for the program. Right. And I don't know what made her, like, think that she was. But, um... If yeah, you don't that want to was, go, you don't have to go. Like, no, no. Still oh, well, there was this one kid who... You remember Yoshi? <laughs> oh, yeah. He was this Japanese kid, and he... he I mean, he, I think he was, like, severely autistic. Severely autistic. Yeah, his... Apparently, his dad was the president of the Rotary Club, and, like, as some sort of, like, gesture, sent him to go be an exchange student. And this poor kid... <laughs> this poor kid stuck out, like, a sore thumb. Oh, my God. Because he, he didn't learn German. He didn't speak English. So he was just... He was a problem child. And he'd leave and he'd go and walk around. So the other people from his club, like these other exchange students who were like affiliated with him, would have to like hunt him down and find him. So like, like he just he would just leave. And then the, there was this one girl, Renata, who was from Brazil, and she would always have to like tell him off. And she'd, Yoshi, you cannot walk away like that, you know. And he, oh yes, sir, you know. And oh god. <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry. And when we were in, when we were in Prague, when we were in Prague, we got on this we got on this train to go back to the hotel. You know, we were in the city. And we were, this hotel was outside of the city, and he starts just kind of freaking out. And no one can figure out what's wrong until we get back to the hotel, and someone gets on the Wi-Fi and he uses Google Translate. He lost his wallet, so there was no way for him to communicate it. Do you remember that? I didn't even know he lost oh, his yeah. wallet. So that was like that was like oh, the big oh. thing. Oh God. Oh Jesus, no! I'm glad I was not in there in the dilemma because I probably, well, I probably would have blown off the first minute. All right, you're just freaking out about something, whatever. <laughs> just having a little moment. Yoshi being Yoshi. <laughs> I know. I, I, I love like probably the only person that like didn't dismiss it was probably um, Renata. Was Renata? She wasn't even on our tour, so I don't even know. I no Renata was. Oh she was. Oh yeah, that's right. She was. Because, yeah, yeah, that was a big ordeal. They put this girl on our trip because they wanted her to kind of, like, take care of Yoshi. And that, like, that's not fair to her. Um, but... Because they, yeah, they, yeah. they had one trip that was mostly, like, Hispanics. And one trip that was, like, mostly everybody else. And she ended up having to go on the everyone else trip because she had to take care of this kid. Oh, that stinks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was just, like, complaining about something one time. Like, he just got, like, mugged in an alleyway. And he's just like screaming about it, but no one can understand <laughs> yeah. him. That was some, yeah. some terrible ordeal, but yeah. there's no way for him to communicate it. <laughs> yeah, it's Yoshi, whatever. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like just like crying about getting like raped or something. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> and then everybody else is like, "Yeah, Yoshi. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, well, right, it, just take a walk. Fine. <laughs> walk it up, champ. What? Well, yeah. His name was Yoshiaki. So like a combination of Yoshi and Teriyaki. Red. Sounds like a cartoon character. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But, um... Oh, that poor bastard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Those are about, about the, the weirdos on our exchange, really. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm And then we had the forklifting things, where, uh... <laughs> oh, the... We, uh, oh, God. We, <laughs> there were these... <laughs> there was this... You can, you can start. There was this Chilean and this Mexican, Victor and Matias, and they were really good friends. And what we'd do is we'd go up to them, and we'd reach down, like, not into their ass crack, but beyond that, like, into the gooch, and just lift. You know, just pull up with our shoulders. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> so these poor kids, you know, they, the entire time they're walking around kind of, like, squatting and waddling because they know someone's going to grab them from behind. 
Uh, well, that's awesome. Do you, do you like? Are you gonna spend like a large amount of time with these kids? Oh yeah, so we gooch scoop them, you know. Hmm. For a while. And that's they sort of they like they sort of started enjoying it though. Then they got weird. <laughs> like they 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 come up to us and they're like, "Hey, uh, when are you guys gonna do the next gooch scoop?" You know, it's been a while. That was when we realized we had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that take all the fun out of it? Yeah, no, that didn't happen. That didn't. <laughs> the scandalous part of it was what made it yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's no fun terrible. if they consent. <laughs> Alright. I think my time is up. My Chinese food is here. Uh, I gotta go eat. Well, Dan, sure. it uh, has been lovely having you as our first call-in guest. Hasta la vista. Yes. Have fun being cultured. All right. It was a pleasure. It was nice meeting you, Zach. Nice See you later, too, Zach. Man. Take care, guys. Bye. See you later. Um, so, our plan with this is we're going to try and have more guests, because I think that makes it a little bit more fun. I have more fun doing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A third input, you know, uh, regulated, makes it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to try and do that more, and uh, I think we're going to try and make it more regular. Yeah. So I think we're going to try and make it weekly. Or at least as close as we can with our schedules permitting. It should get a lot easier to do from here on out. Um, that's about all I have. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for listening to uh, the Gag Reflex. Uh-huh.